Hello. Uh, do you need the whiteboard? Uh, not really. Do you want me to switch? Do you want to do? Guys, we are going to switch it up. Um, let me have my laptop so I look cool because I've got an Apple Mac. Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name is Mark. I'm an entrepreneur, property investor. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the mental side to investing. And it's all come about because one of my colleagues has just asked me, what's the safest way to invest? And I can answer that very straightforward, right? You put the money in the bank and they will pay you interest. And in fact, you limit your deposit in every bank account to 85,000 so that your bank is underwritten by the FCA and the government. So there is a very, very safe way of investing. But it really harks back to the mental side of investing, doesn't it? Why does someone seek security above return? Because what I'm always thinking about is risk-weighted return. We quite often hear about the return, but we don't understand about risk-weighting. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mental side, a little bit how I analyze an investment and decide where it's something that I want to do and hopefully you will find some value in all of that. So guys, if you haven't already given this video a big like, give it a big like. It really does help me out with the algorithm and I would massively appreciate it. And if you haven't already subscribed, why not consider subscribing? We have our subscriber dividend portfolio. How much is that at the moment, Tom? Nine and a half thousand pounds, fantastic. So every single month we pay out the dividends to our subscribers and we get to take part in a passive income journey together. I put another 2,000 pounds in every single month. So it won't take long till that's quite a big pot of money and the dividends will increase exponentially. It's my belief that hopefully by doing that, I will inspire others to take part in their own personal journey as well as take advantage of the money that I'm giving away. So let's get into the video. Let's talk about the mental, oh, you Beeping. So let's get into the video. Let's talk about the mental side to investing because I think it's incredibly important to stay the course quite often. And the, one of the things that I want to hark back straight away to is index funds because it's just so fundamental to investing. Index funds, basically, if you look at the S&P 500 index, it will track the top 500 companies in the US. And as companies become more valuable, it automatically buys more. And as they become less valuable or do worse, it will sell those stocks off. But basically, it's a passively managed fund that backs the winners, sells the losers, and has delivered traditionally a fantastic return of about 10% per year over decades. So we're looking at something that's tried and tested. Now, if you take a very small time frame, if you took 2008 to 2009, it obviously returned a negative number. If you took 2020 to 2021, it returned a very, very positive number. But what we're looking at is average returns over time. And what I find really, really reassuring is to buy into the narrative that over time, things will get better. And that's because technology becomes better, because inflation's in place. Even if you looked at it fundamentally with inflation, money will always become worth. So your investment should, over time, always become worth more. The amount of money that the companies charge for a product, as money becomes worth less, has to become more. So therefore, the amount of profit as a percentage of that has to become more as well. So if you buy into the narrative that what has always been will always be, and that is that as a human race, we will strive to make advances, then you can buy into the narrative that over time you will receive these returns. You also have to buy into the narrative that capital has a value. And capital does have a value because it's restricted, right? So ultimately, if everybody could have as much money as they wanted, and there was no restriction, and there's no restriction on the value of money, nothing would have a value. So it wouldn't make any sense. That narrative just can't really work. So we have to also buy into the narrative that capital will always have a value, which I wholeheartedly do. Now, once you've built this foundation of narrative and story, it's very easy to apply the following mindset. And this is the one I apply for stocks and shares, index funds, all those sort of things. And yesterday was one of the worst days on the FTSE 100, in fact, on the global stock market since 2020 when coronavirus hit. So it's one of the worst days. Today, I'm thinking the following. How amazing we can buy more for cheaper. And this is all about, today the price has gone down so I can buy more of the same stock for less money. I was willing to pay 8,000. I'm even more willing to pay 7,500 if you look at the price of the FTSE 100 index. The same can be applied for any other index fund. So I always apply that mental strategy when the price is going down. When the price is going up, I apply the following strategy. Fantastic, the money's going up, I'm making money. So this allows me, no matter what happens in the market, to have a positive feeling about what I'm doing. So if you applied the opposite, let's think about what would happen then. If the market went down and you applied, oh dear, I'm losing money, 
that would put you in a very negative state and it would be very easy to lose sight of the big picture narrative. If when the market went up, you thought, oh no, I can't buy it at the same price I used to buy it, I won't buy anymore. Well, again, you're not buying into the long-term story. So the mental side of it is so incredibly important, especially on index funds, where your portfolio gets value to you instantly based on what your phone says or your account or however you store your money. You get up-to-date valuations. I think lots of people would be very, very paranoid if every day somebody came around to their house, knocked on the door and told them how much their house was worth today. Because one day they might be up 10 grand, the next day down 10 grand. And people would feel very paranoid and sad about that. Now, I think that the human brain is very much wired to try and keep you away from danger. And what I think is really important is that you just understand the story and the narrative for the long term, and that allows you to make better investment decisions. So when it comes to index funds, these are my rules. And I'll also tell you my rules for property in a second. With index funds, I buy into the narrative that index funds are the best way for me to invest. No matter what hot stock I'm being told about, I don't know whether it will be successful. No matter what stock is going to fail, I don't know that that's the case. Yesterday, I was told Credit Suisse by one of my friends is definitely going to fail. How sure is he? I don't know. I'm not buying into that narrative. My belief is that over time, if I buy the index fund, my index funds will become more wealthy. And I'm going to do that over time. My second belief is I have to dollar cost average, which means I commit to buying every single month. And that way, if I have a down month, it's not a problem. I can buy when it's cheaper. If I have an up month, it's no problem. I can buy when it's up. But it smooths out my purchasing and it means I don't have these wild swings. Third belief I have when it comes to index fund investing is that over time, I will receive a return of between 7 and 12%. Because that's what's always happened. So as long as I buy into all of that and I have all that belief, I find it very, very easy to commit the capital. Now let's think about property. Here's my belief when it comes to property. I make money when I buy. And because I don't have to buy, if I buy smart, I can make money on that day. And let me explain what I mean by that. If there's a house and it's worth £100,000 and I can secure it for 90, then on that day I make £10,000 or a 10% return. But I don't make a 10% return, do I? because the amount of capital I'm putting in may be only 25% of that as a deposit. So I actually make nearly a 40% return by making money when I buy. So with property, I always make money when I buy. Bought a flat in Newbury, 160, it was worth 180, I made 20K when I bought it. Okay, today let's have a look at how much a two bed flat in Newbury is going for. Nice new block, it's about 190. So I'm still up even though the market has tightened. And that's because I made money when I bought. So if I paid 180, I just wouldn't have the same level of insulation. So if you're an investor, I implore you to always try and make money when you buy, either by negotiating a good deal or by negotiating buying something where you can add value. There are two ways of doing it, but either way, try and make money when you buy. The second thing I believe with property is over time, it will go up. It always has, it always will. So I wholeheartedly believe that. And whether it's because money becomes worth less or whether it's because the property value goes up, it doesn't really matter to me. Property will always become worth more. My debt will always become worth less. So there's no point in paying it off. That's why I use interest only mortgages. Because if you think about it, if I borrow £100,000 today, in 30, 40, 50 years time, when I'm leaving this to my children, hopefully 60 years time, at that point, that money's gonna be worth hardly anything. It's the same as asking your grandparents or great grandparents how much their mortgage was. And I remember speaking to my grandparents about it and their mortgage was like £2,000 on a £3,000 house. If they had never paid that off, Today, that wouldn't be a problem. And that is the importance when I say the debt is being paid off by inflation. So that's my second belief. So first, I make money when I buy. Second, I make sure that I understand that the debt will go down in value over time because of inflation and the property become worth more over time because of inflation. And the last thing that I always implore is the fact that I make sure it has a positive cash flow. And that way that I've got enough wiggle room that if interest rates go up or whatever happens in the market, I have insulation. And I believe that if I implore all of that, psychologically, there's very little chance it will go wrong for me. Not zero, there never is. But there are many, many poor people far in front of me in the queue to go bust before I do. And it's really important to not be right at the front of the queue when things are going wrong. Let somebody else take the fall, then things will have to be smoothing out. You cannot allow everybody to go bust. So don't be at the front of the queue. That's the most important thing. 
make sure you're somewhere back and there's not that much risk on that. So guys, that's my take on the mental side of investing. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm massively interested. Guys, I believe the most sensible and safe way of investing is to just implore good mental strength and understand the principles behind investing. Dollar cost average over time, make sure you've got a margin, make sure that you're getting a good positive return, and don't expect more than the market will give you. If you're expecting 30, 40% a year in returns, something, somewhere, there's a huge amount of risk that you're not aware of. So guys, let me know in the comments your thoughts, like and subscribe as always, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers guys.